1964 was the year Kenya became a republic after a series of major political developments in the country. They started on January 24th, when there was shooting by some rebellious soldiers at the Kenya Rifles Lanet Barracks near Nakuru. Those responsible were arrested and court-martialed. Five months later, 16 of the mutineers were found guilty and sent to jail for a total of 197 years. The Lanet mutiny came even as the Shifter War in the northeastern region was assuming worrying proportions. By April, Shifter bandits were operating in the coast region. They had killed four people, one European and three Africans, in a raid in South Lamu. The government sent troops to the region in an effort to end the mutiny and quest for secession that the Somali shifter were fighting for. But that year, Prime Minister Jomo Kenyatta and his colleagues in the ruling Kenya African National Union, KANU, had a more pressing goal to achieve. They wanted Kenya to become a republic and end the last vestiges of the country's colonial heritage. In August, Parliament amended the constitution to replace the British Queen with a president as head of state and to create the office of a vice president. It also whittled down the devolved powers of the regional governments by making them totally dependent on the central government for their finances. That month, Kanu Secretary General Tom Mboya prevailed upon Paul Ngay and other African People's Party MPs to cross over to Kanu. There would follow a steady trickle of Kenya African Democratic Union Kadu MPs crossing the floor. So well did Mboya's strategy work that on November 10th, Ronald Ngala, Kadu's leader, reluctantly announced his party's dissolution. Kenya became a de facto one party state. In the new government that Kenyatta formed after the constitutional amendments, Oginga Odinga became vice president and his political arch-rival, Tom Boya, was appointed Minister for Economic Planning and Development. There were only two members of the previous opposition in it, Kadu's Daniel Arab Moy, who got the Home Affairs portfolio, and Ngay, who got Cooperatives and Marketing. Ngala was left out. The rest of the appointments to his cabinet consolidated Kenyatta's hold on power. He had already brought to core ministries a number of trusted Kikuyu leaders. Now, he reorganized his cabinet in a way that gave this group even greater power. He retained James Gishuru at Finance, Julius Kiano at Commerce and Industry, and Charles Njonjo as Attorney General. Kenyatta appointed his brother-in-law, Mbiu Koinange, Minister for Education. He created a new ministry for defense and internal security, to which he appointed his cousin and personal physician, Njoroge Mungai, previously at Health. To work under Mungai would be Bernard Hinga, another Kikuyu, who took over from Sir Richard Catling as Commissioner of Police in December 1964. These ministers would remain the inner core of Kenyatta's government to the very end, ensuring not merely the survival of his presidency, but the eventual growth of a vibrant Kikuyu middle class that would in turn sustain him in power. 1964 was also the year the new government started buying large European settlers' farms, mostly in the Rift Valley region, with a loan from the British government. The farms would later be distributed to many landless people and former freedom fighters, mainly from the central region. It was also the year the government set up the National Youth Service within the Ministry of Labour, then headed by Elio Dungala Mwendwa. In May that year, the University College of Nairobi replaced the Royal College Nairobi and became affiliated to the University of London. The colleges Simeon Ominde and David Wasao became Kenya's first full university professors. 
1964 was also the year Kenya began to make a name for herself in international athletics competitions. When at the Olympic Games held in Tokyo, Wilson Kiprugut won a bronze medal in the 800 meters race. With Kiprugut in Tokyo was Kipchoge Keino, who won no medals in his attempts at the 1500 and 5000 meters, but who would go on to become one of the greatest middle distance runners of all time.